Praise God. I greet you in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's the next uh, Sunday morning again, and we're here to, to, to minister unto you the word of God. I trust that this message will be an encouragement and a source of inspiration to all you tuned in and locked in. Again, permit me to thank TIN for this opportunity and Reverend Prisgo Woods for sharing this time with me. God's richest blessings. What we're going to do today, we're going to read the word, we're going to pray, and we're going to get into the message. This morning's message is entitled, Lost and Found. Praise God. So we're going to read the word. It's taken from the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 19. I'm reading verse 176. And I just want to rush across to Matthew chapter 18, verses 12. But we're going to read... Psalms 119 verse 176 now. I have gone astray like a lost sheep. Seek thy servant, for I do not forget thy commandments. Matthew says this. How think ye, if a man have an hundred sheep, and one of them be gone astray, Doth not he leave the ninety and nine and goeth into the mountains and seek that which is gone astray? And if so be that he finds it, verily I say unto you, he rejoice more of that sheep than of the ninety and nine which was not astray. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word today. Father, I pray, Lord God, that you will anoint me with your grace, Lord God, to share your word as, Lord God, you will have it been shared today. Father, I pray, Lord God, that some listener, some, some person will pay attention, Lord God, to what you have them to hear today. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Lost and found. That's two words that sometimes we put together, not thinking that, hey, these can be two separate things which can cause or do different things. My experience with being lost started with me in Trinidad. I was in Arima, and I was going to a friend's house to repair some things. And I am at the dial. An area that I know quite well. The sun was up. I knew the surroundings very well. But from the dial, I took a transport and I went uh, a bit out of Arima or Arima Centra. And we were there for a little while and then the sun set. As a proud to be Gonian, you know, you, you, you understand. The sun comes up in the east and it goes down in the west. So as a Tobigonian, I, I, I often pride myself uh, not to get lost because I know my cardinal points. I know where I am at. But that particular situation, I was there and I am wondering which way is west, which way is north. Because the sun had gone down and it left me bewildered. Being lost is not an easy thing. Being lost, you can find yourself at your wit's end. And there I was, standing on the corner, not knowing which way was east, which way was west, which way was north, which way was south. And I'm trying to stop a car to get me back to somewhere I am familiar with. Being lost to me had a, a, a very funny experience because it was the first time I had experienced that experience of being lost. I'm always at the top of my game. I know where I am. Being lost sometimes is difficult for the person who is lost. Not only you are lost in the sense that, hey, I may not know my cardinal points, but sometimes confusion steps in when you are not familiar with your surroundings. 
One can be lost and don't even know that they are lost. The Bible gives us a, a description of a woman losing a coin. And for many of us, losing a coin is no big thing. In fact, this morning, while I was cleaning out, I saw some coins. And I asked myself a very important question. Did these coins knew that they were lost? Here am I, not even looking for the coins, and there they appear. But I remember a few weeks ago, I was looking for some change. And I just couldn't find it. But I wondered if the coins knew that they were lost, what would they have done about it? It's the same way with you and I. The psalmist says, I am like a sheep who is lost and astray. Many times we find ourselves in position where we are in situation that is not familiar. We may find ourselves in locations that are not familiar to our daily process or daily being. We may consider that I am lost. Therefore, if I'm lost, what am I to do? The first thing I did when I realized I was lost in Arima, I called for help. Strangely enough, the friend I went to he was on the other line, and then he gave me directions. When one is lost, it's very important, one, to find direction. It's very important to understand that if I'm lost and I need to go to where I need to be, I need directions. We must add here, when a man is lost and he has no direction, he's like a ship at sea without a sail and without a sail the wind can blow you in any which direction many times we find lost people going to places that they have no business going to we find lost people being at sea adrift in this world of sin having no direction when you are lost anything can get you where you're going when you don't know where you need to be, any road can get you there. But the thing about it is, being lost, being astray is one thing. Not knowing that you are lost, that's another thing. As I said, those coins were there. And the thing about it is, the coins were there, they were lost. And Jesus described this woman. She, she had turned the house upside down. Have you ever lost something? Maybe it's something precious or maybe it's something minute as a key. The trick about losing keys are the key has the potential of opening a door. But unless you can find the key, the door remains shut. Today, we have lost people looking for doors. And many times, they might have found a door. Maybe it's a door to a church. Maybe it's a door to a better living. But the hardest part of finding a door is not having a key. Today, we have a lot of lost people looking for the correct door in order to walk through. Many of us, we look at doors and say, this one may be looking good. Maybe this one is the door for me. But today, I want to, to, to draw your attention to a door that a lot of people may have seen. Although you've been lost, there is a door that can lead you and I maybe to a better place. Jesus himself says, I am the door. If you come, man, you can come in and out and find good pastures. When you are lost, I remember looking for a sheep at one particular time. 
and on my search I wondered if this sheep knew it was lost because I am there seeking and searching for this sheep. Like many of us, we wander this world we call life. We wander in and out, around and about, and we don't know which way we are going. And we are there like that sheep. And it's, it is, it, it's tragic to understand that mankind sometimes behaves like sheep. And here I, I am looking at this sheep. And after searching diligently, I found the sheep not up in some grass. And I'm asking this sheep, didn't you know I was searching for you? This reminds me of the job that God did. Jesus said in Matthew, he says, even if a shepherd had 99 sheep. This one sheep that has gone astray. Sometimes we may go astray in our thinking. You may not actually physically move from one place to other. But sometimes in your thinking you may have gone astray. Thinking to yourself that, hey, I am my own man. I have created this and I've done that. And you think that, hey, I am I'm good where I am. But here the master came looking for that sheep. The Bible says that he found it on a mountain. Sometimes you may find yourself straying in places that you may think it's a high and a good place. You may find yourself maybe in a valley and you wonder, how did I get here? You may find yourself maybe by some water and you're saying to yourself, this is a good place to be. But the truth is, any place you are where the master is not, is not a good place. I was there in Arima being lost. And not only did I ask for help, the next thing I did was follow directions. I know for some of us, following directions could be a hard task. I remember giving my wife uh, some directions. And she's not as, 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 as privileged as me to have grown up where the sun comes up in the east and goes down in the west. So she, she, we we'd always know where our cardinal points are. I remember one time giving her some direction and using the terminology, go east and go west. And she just couldn't find a place because it was not easy to follow these types of directions. Many times we stay lost because we fail to follow directions. One direction we must always adhere to is the direction that God gives. Many times we want to do and go our own way. The reason why we find ourselves lost is because it's simple and easy to follow the crowd. Following the crowd does not necessarily mean that the crowd is going the right way. In fact, Jesus puts it like this. Broad is the way that leads to destruction. There are many that will go on that road. But there is a narrow road and few will find it. There is something about following the crowd. Following the crowd does not take anything from you. You just go along. You don't have to change your life. You don't have to do anything different. You just go along. They tell me that the road to hell is paved with good intentions. You may not intend to do the things you are doing. You may not have intended to go and say the things you have been going and doing and saying. But the truth is, if you don't follow direction, and the only direction that you need to follow is the direction to God. It's very important. Not only did I follow directions, 
But it was important that I stick to it. Many times, we as, as human beings, when we are lost, it's easy to ask for directions. It's very easy to say, I will follow directions. But many times we find ourselves strained from the directions given. As sheep that's gone astray, sometimes things look better on the other side. Maybe this preacher is preaching a better message than my preacher. Maybe his doctrine is better than my doctrine that I've been taught. Listen, this time we must understand we need to stick to the root. Being getting lost is easy. But the Bible says, if you stay on the narrow way, it can lead to life. Many times when we are lost, we are in jeopardy of losing our lives. When we don't stick to the direction given, it's easy for us to be led into parts where the wolves are. Where the sheep slayers are. It's easy for us to be led down the road where it can bring to us destruction. Many times people are lost and they end up bad because they have not followed the direction. Today, what is the direction, you may ask me? The direction is Jesus Christ. For he himself said, I am the way. I remember being there lost and so lost and so confused I did not know what to do. I remember sitting in a taxi and, and, and one of the instructions that he gave me is stop a taxi and tell them you're going to the dial. Interestingly enough I knew my way from the dial. Interestingly enough I am only saying in my heart, if I can get to the dial, I could get to where I need to go. I remember sitting in the, the taxi, not knowing if the driver is heading west or east. I'm just there sitting, waiting just to see a sign of familiarity. Just to see a sign of, the, hey, I know where I am. There are many people in our world today just waiting to see a sign. Just waiting to see something in the distance. I remember one fisherman friend of mine. He was there at sea and he was relating to me his experience. And he was saying that while you're out there and it's day, Everything is calm. Everything is fine. But he said midday a rainstorm came. And the place got as dark as night. And he's there in his boat. And he couldn't recognize which way Tobago was. He said it seems to him that the, 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 the rainstorm lasted for hours. Because when the rain let up and, and, and the sea it became a little calm, he looked around and it was dark. And when he looked around, he looked for signs to show him exactly where he was. As a good fisherman, he said, he knew by looking at, at, at his compass which way he was or which way he should have headed. But that and all could not help him because the place was dark and he couldn't see anything in the distance that would indicate to him where Tobago was. He sat in his boat and while sitting there, he glimpsed a familiar sight. He said, Curtis, those days it had the beam from the fort. And he recognized it because it was a double beam. And he said, when he saw the beam, he could have tell without a doubt 
which way Tobago was. It's one thing to be lost. But as that fisherman showed me, there must be a light that one could look to in order to be found. He told me when he saw the beams, he felt like though he could walk on them because he was so assured of where Tobago was, he could now face the bow towards the light and move towards it. Being lost at sea is one thing, but being lost in the sea of sin, it's a terrible thing. One needs direction, and the direction that one needs is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the beam that will shine you towards life. He, he, while relating the story, I could feel the passion in his heart when he said that, hey, when I got closer to shore, and then I could not only see where the light is coming from, but I can see familiar things around like the layout of the land. It reminded me as I drove into Arima, I could see where the, 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 the Valor's Rome was. And a sense of calm came over my soul. Listen, it's one thing to be lost. It's another thing to find peace. Listen, in the midst of your storm, being lost and out there not knowing which way to go, there can be a calm because when you are lost, your peace is gone. I remember going to the dial. And I stood up at the dial for a few minutes. You know, it's, it's a relief. When you come to Jesus Christ, you can feel a relief. Jesus said, you can cast your cares upon me because I care it for you. I felt the relief. I felt the, 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 the burden of being lost taken away from me because here I am now being able to say that I know for sure where I'm going. A lost sheep cannot tell where it's going. Today, you may be in that situation or that position and you're saying to oneself, hey, I wish I knew where I was. I wish I knew where I was going. I wish I knew somebody to take me there. As I have found out, uh, listen, not only in that position of being lost physically, not only being lost, uh, listen, one can also be lost. Uh, your soul could be out there in this sin or, or this world of sin and not recognizing that I'm lost. You are just drifting. The truth is, over 35 years ago, I was found. Just like that woman found that coin in scripture. I wasn't looking for Jesus. In fact, I thought that I was doing well. I thought that, hey, I have my whole life ahead of me. I was, had no thought about God and what God has in store for me. But the truth is, when one is lost, these things don't matter because you don't know that you are lost. Maybe I'm speaking to that man or that woman there today. You don't know that you are lost just like those coins. But the truth is, even though you weren't looking for him, he's there looking for you. Even though you don't know that somebody has need of you, he is there looking. In fact, the word of God says he came to seek and to save that which was lost. It's one thing to be lost. But listen, there is a greater function for one once one is found. There's a greater purpose for one's life than when one is lost. Listen, when you are lost, maybe you don't know your purpose. But when one is found, there can be purpose in your life. Aren't you tired of drifting? Being out there 
sailing on the sea of life, being lost. Jesus is the one who's come. His job was and still is to seek and to save that which was lost. The beauty about it is that even though you are lost, you can be found. The Bible says in that portion of scripture we read that he will rejoice after he has found that one sheep. So it doesn't matter how long you've been lost. It doesn't matter where you've been lost. What matters is that God wants to rejoice over finding that sheep. That sheep could be you today. That sheep could be you that has been lost and out there. That sheep could be you today. The Bible tells us that angels rejoice over one sheep. One soul that repents. Sir, today, I want to give you the opportunity, ma'am, not to be lost, but to be found. That opportunity is for you to surrender your life to Jesus. That opportunity to move away from being lost to be found can be yours today. But you have to make a decision to serve God. You have to make a decision to commit your life to him. Would you bow your heads with me right where you are? You're saying in your heart, I'm tired of being lost. I need to be found. Today is your opportunity. Would you say these prayers with, this prayer with me? Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. I need you as my savior. Forgive me. Wash me. Cleanse me. If you've said that prayer, let permit me to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you've seen the man, the woman that have bowed their heads knowing that they've been lost. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, that you will save them now. Lord God, as that prodigal son's father loved them and embraced them. Lord, I pray that you will embrace them now. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I'm Brother Curtis. I'm glad to be with you, to share with you again from the word of God. Until next time. God richly bless you.